Thank God for starting us on our way. Thank God for blessing us to see this day. Uh, this is the day he has made. I have um, concluded that you respond to the season you're in and to rejoice and be glad in it, um, to be so spontaneous. Sometimes it does not fit one season. And as much as people try to tell you that no matter what season they're in, they, they wake up and rejoice in it. I don't believe them. I, I don't believe them because sometimes your season won't allow you to. Um, your season won't allow you to, to do things opposite of your season. And so as much as you want to walk around right now in a summer wardrobe, the season just won't let you. And so you can try it, but you know it, 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 it won't look right. It won't feel right. It won't be right. And so your season, dictates your wardrobe and dictates how you think about your wardrobe and and so it is be it's, it's extremely difficult to do things opposite of your season you, you almost have to be unprepared for the season um, where you just did not prepare for it to dress inappropriate for that season. And so we understand this is the day the Lord has made. And we thank God for waking us up this morning. We also respond to the season we're in. And we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the fear and in the sight of the Lord. And we allow every man and every woman to have his and her season and to respond to that season. Don't you see? And so if you can rejoice and be glad in it, then rejoice and be glad in it. If you're weeping in it, then weep in it, you know. If you're laughing, then we'll laugh. If you're crying, then cry. Uh, but give happiness words and give sadness words and give grief words and, you know, respond to it. You know, allow your, 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 your body and allow your, you know, your triune, you know, to respond to it. Your, your triune being and it's not good to suppress any portion of it. Don't you see? And so if you have your Bible and I give you time to really get your word and open it up today, open it up to 1 Samuel. We're going to be reading 1 Samuel 1, verses 9 through 10, and 1 Samuel 2, verses 1. And don't just sit there today. Get your word. And let's plunge into it together. You know, get your Bible. Let's, let's have it together. Let's, let's look at it together. Don't you see? You know, because um, right now, God have, a, this, have established that this is how we will not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And we thank God for that, you know, for this Zoom platform. We thank them for the telephone platform, you know, and there's a school of thought that you, you can't be effective, you know, unless you're meeting, physically meeting. And I disagree with that. For though we be bound, the word of God is not bound. 
Then as a school of thought, you can't be as effective if you're not showing yourself. Um, one of the things I've always said is I'm not a see me person. And I'm not a rah-rah guy and I'm not a see me guy. And I'm not a it's all about you or all about me.com guy. This is a wonderful opportunity to, to allow God and the word do the work. It really is. And it forces you to, to expand your hearing. You know, and, and, and now you're not doing things for show. You're not dressing up and spraying and wiping and rubbing. And it's no lipstick and eyelashes. And it's no, no um, brushing and combs. And it's no suits and dresses and hats and watches and rings. It's just you and God. It's just you and God. And a lot of folk in Hollywood and, and having a problem with this. A lot of people, worldly people having a problem because they're, they're hungry for some attention and hungry to be seen. You know, where, where, where this, this really just, you know, it fits a consecrated lifestyle. It fits a, you know, an introverted lifestyle. This is this is, you know, this is where we are. Don't you see? And it's all about God. That's who it's about. And so take out your Bible and and, and I, I suggest in some homes that you separate from one another. If you cannot be free with one another, or if you feel bound with one another, separate with one another, separate and get your own, you know your own phone, your own tablet, laptop, whatever you have, and, 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 and get in your own spot. You know, um, we have a whole week waiting on us. I need everything God has for me this morning, and I don't, and I don't need to be bound. And I don't need someone asking me a thousand questions and, you know, and, you know, and, and, and lack of days ago, while I'm trying to hear what thus said the Lord God. But then again, I'm serious, you see. You understand. And so 1 Samuel 1, 9 and 10. You know, like it's, it's, it's not walking time, it's not eating time, it's not, you know, playing time or texting time, it's church time. You know, and, and you have to be serious about the Lord because the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, beholding both the good and the evil. Don't you see? So at 1 Samuel 1, 9 and 10. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. In 1 Samuel 2, verse 1, and Hannah prayed. It's a praying woman. And Hannah prayed. And said, my heart rejoiceth in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies. Because, with me on the account, or because I rejoice in thy salvation. Then Hannah prayed. It's a praying woman. Yeah, I like that already, that this is a praying woman. I love that. And I love that we get today to look at this passage of scripture and to allow our spirits to soar and walk in heavenly places because So much is happening and so much can cause you to feel 
pressed on every side. You know, and then there, there, there are things that can transpire and things that can happen that those that have support, it can't really do it for them. And then you have others who don't have support. It's almost like there's places you can go where you feel like or or perceive that it's just the, the place you have to go. It's just your cross, you bear it. And even when people try to assist you in it, they, they only could do it for a few cubics or a few feet because it's, it's your cross. And then the, the mature believer un understands and have to remind him and herself that that cross member, it's not the full cross, it's the cross member, you know, that they have to pick up that cross member daily and not pick it up and be still, but pick it up and follow Christ daily. You know, they have to bear, bear their cross with the understanding that the branch cannot live separate from the vine, you know, and that we must be connected to our life source, always connected. And then to know you have a cross, you know, that each one of us have a cross member across our shoulders, that we have a cross that we have to pick up daily. It's like, Every day. Now I tell people all the time, you already have a cross. Don't make it unbearable. Don't make it impossible. Don't add to it things you don't have to add to it. This is not the time to continue with self-inflicted wounds or get away from from that mentality, you have to go to hell and back to be used by God. You know, I was told for years that I had to go through what I went through to be used by God. And I believed it because why wouldn't I? But when the Lord told me I didn't, I didn't have to fight off a relative trying to rape me. I didn't have to have a one-time STD called gonorrhea. I didn't have to sleep on a bus and sleep outside. I didn't have to be a five-year conservative vice lord. I didn't have to have a two-year probation for hitting a car and trying to get away. I didn't have to be cheated on and lied on. I didn't have to to be used by him. That I didn't have to go through those things. The only thing you need to be used by God is the heart of God. And so get away from that. The more you go through, the more you can be used. No, no, no. No, no, no. You can be, you can sit with a beautiful countenance doing the duty of watching sheep. And the prophet could come to your house and you're the one he's come to anoint. You don't have to be on an abortion table. You don't have to be you know, in the backseat of a car. You don't have to be in every hotel room. You don't, you don't have to be you know, on, on anti-depression. You don't have to be in a psych ward. You don't have to be domestically abused and violently attacked. All you need to be used by God is his heart. You don't have to be incested and molested, cursed out and jumped on and cheated on and spoken to wrong, you know, no. The only, the only qualification you need to be used by God is to have his heart, you know, because a rock can cry out, a jackass can speak. Don't you see? And you have seasons where 
you can feel pressed on every side or things just not working out the way you th- want them to. And they feel contrary to your prayer requests. Now, let me say something to you. If there's, there's more people than you know who this morning don't really have a prayer request or, or don't really have a desire on a high level. And what I mean by that is there are people who are not consistently, they don't have something that's consistently something they pray about every day and then several times during the day. You think they do, but there's many people who don't, who after their morning prayers, God don't hear them again to their night prayers, if that. They don't really have a pressing thing or need or, and even and even some who say they do, well, you respond to, to that. If you really have a pressing need, well, you know, then God should hear you and should see you. It should show. Don't you see? And so there's not as many people as you think crying out because they have a real need or because they acknowledge they have a real need. And then there's not as many people as you think really want real help. They say they do. But when they challenged or when help comes, it proves them. And then what you have to go through You see, it's not meat to take the children's bread and cast the dogs. How bad do you want this woman? It's not meat to take the children's bread and cast the dogs. You know, you you asking for the children's bread, you dog. How bad do you want this? She responds, truth, Lord. But even the dogs desire the crumbs that fall from their master table. Because I guess you don't know. You're my master. I guess you don't see yet. If I'm a dog, I'm your dog. I have chosen you. So how bad do you want it? Enough to say truth, Lord. Not to be offended. Not to walk away. Not to get mad. Enough. I'm challenged. But I've done all I could to get here. And then when I get here, I have to press through the press just to get close to you. And truth, Lord. Whatever I have to go through, you see, it's not many people you think in that place that they won't lash out or get mad at God or get mad at the people he sent to help them or, or turn a deaf ear. Need forces you out of a certain part of your sanity. Need make you forget what's on the refrigerator or, or what, what's in the bank or what accolades you have hanging up somewhere. Need. Or make you do like I did and wear mixed max socks or not know which way you drove to work or what to do next. Need. Here, this woman here has a need. Her name is Hannah. It's a praying woman. I thank God for that. Because only God knows what would befall this position without him without prayer. And this is a this is a beautiful woman who who married to to a, to a wonderful man. I believe his name is Elkanah, married to a wonderful man for Bible readers and, and but this wonderful man had two wives, Hannah and Penina. He had two wives. And the Bible tells us that Penina, Penina had children. But Hannah did not. Panana had her knees met as far as bearing children, but Hannah did not. Now you have to understand in this day, in this time that we're reading about, being barren is one of the worst things you can be. Being incapable of producing offspring, being sterile, unproductive, unfruitful, was one of the worst things you can be. We know it's her problem because he already has children. 
We know it's her problem, her issue. And it'd be different if she and Penina didn't have children. But it's just her, so we know it's her problem. And when you have to admit, it's my problem. It's not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. When you have to admit, it's my problem. And that's a good place to be when you have to admit, confess, this is my issue. This is my thing. This is my problem. And so she ended up, she in this unproductive, unfruitful place where needs are not met. Many people have feel like some needs are not met. For her, it was childbearing needs. She had the husband. Someone else say, but I, I, I need a husband. Someone else says, I need a wife. Someone else says, I need a job. Someone else says, I need this. I need that. Her need was children. And so anyone with a need, we, we fit ourselves in, the, in, this, in this passage of scripture. Because I got a real need. Her need made her, made her be considered unproductive and unfruitful. Now you have to understand how this is a how this is affecting her, especially in that day. Because in the beginning, Genesis said, in the beginning, God blessed procreation. God blessed and said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, which means conquer it. Don't just be here, conquer things. Conquer it. Conquer it. You have conquerors, and then you have more than conquerors. He said, and, and he said, so in the beginning, when God blessed, you know, procreation and said, be fruitful. I want what I want what, what I want what you promised. I, I want what you said and multiply. I want what you released. I want everything you have for me. What is it about me? What is it about me? That, that make me unqualified? What is it about me that make me unloved? What is it about me that, that makes me different, you know, than, than, it, than what I'm seeing? Why me? Why, why me? I just, all I, I wouldn't want so much had you not promised it. So why me? And had you not said and blessed it, maybe I wouldn't want it so bad. You know, David came along in Psalms 127 and 3 and said, Behold, children are the inheritance from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward, or his reward is the fruit of the womb. All she wants is her reward. All she wants is her inheritance. All she wants is what is what she believes should should be hers. So what's wrong with me? Like, what disqualifies me? What have what have I done? And it doesn't matter. The Bible told us that her husband Elkanah that he loved her. Look at the one that's to you say and tell them, say, but it's not about that. It's not about that. It's not, it's not about that. The Bible said that Elkanah loved Hannah. They said, but the Lord shut up her womb. But Elkanah loved Hannah, but the Lord shut up her womb. Whew. Now, this is very important to know because in that day, a husband was permitted. To divorce a barren or unproductive wife, he could have got he got easily got out of that. And this is very important for us to see, a uh, uh, man. This is very important for us to see. The Bible teaches us we know that in that day, he can divorce this woman because she's barren. But the Bible says that he loved her even more. He loved his unproductive wife even more. 
And this is important because when she left the house, she was socially ostracized and criticized and talked about. The Bible told us that. That her enemies made fun of her. The Bible told us that. That her enemies criticized her. People talked about her. That Bible told us, even in her own home, when she would go into the and, and, and go up to church, and when she would go into the sanctuary, when she would go, you know, to, into the presence of the Lord, the Bible told us that Penina provoked her sore. What does that mean? It means that Penina provoked her very much. In so much that the Bible told us this praying woman made she was made to fret, which means made to worry so much that it eats away at you. So it's very important to have someone in your corner if possible. It's very important to not push away someone who's trying to be there for you. You need somewhere you can exhale or know that this person has my back. It's something when you have to fight at work and then fight at home. That's something. That's that's a real that's a real battle because you have you feel like you have no resting place. You know, to be to have to fight at work, fight lust and fight confusion and fight lying, then go home. And, fight in a hard marriage and fight unfaithfulness or fight being criticized. You feel like you have no resting place. And the Bible said in verse 1 Samuel 1 and 7 that this went on year after year. Year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, Penina provoked her until she cried and was so upset that the Bible said in verse 7, she got so upset she would not eat. She's not on a fast. It's what today they'll call depression. It's what today they'll label as stress and depression. That she was that that this that she was so upset and so beat up that she would just cry and not eat. Two characteristics of depression. And this went on year after year, after year, after year. Year after year. And, and, and we understand who've been here long enough now to know how hard this was year after year after year with no change. How hard that had to be. And the Bible lets us know that, that Elkanah did what people do. He questioned her, what is wrong with you? He questioned her, why do you look like this? He questioned her, why is your countenance like this? He questioned her, why are you always so upset? He questioned her, like, why don't you look at what you do have? I don't, don't I love you? Don't I give you more than I give Penina? Aren't I here for you? It did what people do. Like, like you don't, you don't, you don't have an, a reason to be like this. Why don't you look at the other side of it? Am I leaving you? Don't I come home every day? Don't I feed you? Don't I take care of you? Come on, baby, that should be enough. You come on, you good. You did what people do. It's what we do when we're not walking in your moccasins. Never judge an Indian until you walk in his moccasins. We do what people do. Like, what's your problem? 
Look, look at what all you do have. What is your problem? What's wrong with you now? We did what people do. Because people can wear out and people can grow weary themselves. And people have some things they need to deal with also. And so people could throw their hands up and say, okay, I'm not taking this phone call. Okay, I am not answering this text. Okay, I'm not opening this door. Uh-uh. Here this person come again. Mm-mm. People. And so Hannah did what people do. First Samuel 1, 9 says, Hannah rose up. And after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk, I know exactly what she doing. I know exactly what she doing. I know exactly what she doing. She wearing her mask. She putting on her face. You right, huh? You right, babe. You right. Oh, yeah. It, okay. You. I'm okay. I'm okay. If it, everything's good, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm. I'm no. I'm all right. You right. I, you know. Let me look at. Let me. Let me look at. Other, yes. You look. Let me look at it another way. You right, babe. I'm fine. You right. You. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I'm. I'm gonna I'm get up. And I'm not going to cry this morning and I'm not going to look sad and I'm not going to tell you what happened yesterday, how, you know, Penina was teasing me again. I'm not I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to tell you I was up all night crying. I'm not. I hope you don't look at my eyes and see how puffy they are. And I hope you don't look at me. You know, I, I'm fine. I'm going to get up. I'm going to put my clothes on. I'm, 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 I'm going to sit at the table, you know, and I'm going to eat and drink. I'm fine. That's what I'm going to do. I, I don't want any attention. I don't want any conversation. No, no my eyes puffy because I don't know. I, I, I didn't sleep, well, but I'm fine. I'm good. Because, you know, you like you said, you love me and I have, you know, money. And, oh, you're taking care of me. I'm fine. And she did exactly what people do. She put on her mask and act like I'm fine. I don't want to disrupt the table. I don't want to disrupt the house. I don't want to make anybody feel, you know, what I'm going through. Everything is good. But the Bible said after she ate and drank, After she sat there and, and and tried to make everybody believe she's fine. Verse 10 tells us she was in bitterness of soul. Who? Who? Say to yourself, the praying woman. The good wife. The praying woman. The faithful, the faithful wife. That she was in bitterness of soul. Now, you have some people that look you right in your face and they tell you, uh-uh, she need deliverance. Uh-uh, she need the devil cast out of her. Uh-uh, mm -mm, bitter and sweet don't come out the same fountain. Good and evil don't come out the same heart. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. I question her salvation. Mm -mm. Bitter, bitter of soul. Don't you know bitter means hatred? Don't you know bitterness means deep grief? Don't you know bitterness produces a bitter fruit? Don't you know this woman ain't good to be around? Don't you know this is not a good person to be around and her thoughts don't always stay pure as far as clean, as far as, don't you know this woman has some little hates in her and disgust in her and that this produces a bitter fruit? How dare you think that this woman can touch, can touch God. This woman can touch heaven because bitterness, mm -mm, 
You can't be bitter. You can't have some hatred going on. You can't have some deep grief like this. You can't be producing bitter fruit. The kind that made your husband look at you and say, what is wrong with you? And think you can get a prayer through, not you. But the Bible said after she sat there and put on her face. That she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. That she was in bitterness of soul, prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Cried until she cried until she to the anguish all came out of her. Cried until she poured out her soul. That she finally had a chance to sit there and put her face on and, and, and act a certain way in front of the people. But when she was finally able to get away from them, finally able to get into the house of the Lord, finally able to separate herself. And cry out in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And cry until she have no more tears. And with all that bitterness, this is not a praise fest. This is not a happy lifted prayer. This is not a this is not a, 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 a one of those prayers that have you running around and shouting the victory. This is not someone you want to you want to hold hands with and let her lead the prayer. Because you don't want that transference of bitter soul. This is the one we tell you, oh, don't lock hands with her. No, no, no. Look, look, look. And when you pray with her, keep your eyes open. Look, look, don't lock hands with her. She'll put bitterness on you. She'll leave you jacked up. Don't let her pray for you. Mm -mm. She can't pray for you anyway. She needs all her prayers for herself. And definitely don't let her, don't hold her hand while she's praying. Don't look, don't touch her. Unless you want to transfer a bit of soul. So this is where the deep folk back up off of her because either they coming up to lay hands and prophesy or they backing up. Or they want no part of this. But when she was able to get away from people and pour out out of that bitterness of soul place and weep until she have no more tears place. Bible said that this bitter woman did some bitter folk don't do. Which tells me a lot about this precious soul. It's, no matter how bitter beat down how much she's hurting and crying. She will not vacate her relationship with the Lord. She will not throw her hands up and quit on God. She will not do it. She may have even quit on herself, but she won't quit on God. And she have a clear understanding of where her hope comes from. And who she is, who she belonged to, outside of this world, outside of this realm. She have a clear understanding of where her blessings come from. The ones that last. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for feeding me. Thank you for putting clothes on my back. But, but what lasts? The, the ones that the, the blessings that can withstand the fire. The voice that won't ask me this morning, what's wrong with me? Or judge me because I'm not on the highest of mountains. And because it's my season to be in the valley. And won't look and say, how long do you grieve? How long do you cry? How long do you keep praying for one thing? When do you understand it may not be for you? I, <clears throat> Mm 
She runs to her life source. And with all that bitterness and all that hurt and all that crying, this woman of God in verse 11, in verse 11 vowed a vow. And she vowed a vow and said, oh, Lord of hosts, if, because I have some doubt about this now, because it's been year after year after year after year. So she uses a word called if. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But but I vow a vow. I promise you. This is what I promise. And not to husband, not to man, you know, not even to myself. I, I vow a vow, O Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look on the affliction, listen to this, of thine handmaid. Truth, Lord. But even the dogs desire the crumbs that fall from their master table. And no matter what place I'm in, I'm yours. Blessed be the name of the Lord. No matter what I'm going through, I'm yours. No matter where I am, I'm yours. No matter what I'm waiting on and waiting for, I'm yours. No matter what I, what I have to deal with, I'm yours. I was yours laughing. I was yours running and playing. I was yours on a mountain. Now I'm yours with bitterness of soul, weeping out of myself with some hatefulness going on and trying to, in, and trying to inhabit me. But I'm still yours. I'm unproductive, but I'm yours. I'm sterile, but I'm yours. My husband could walk out on any minute and, and leave me, but I'm yours. I'm not the best person in the world today, but I'm yours. And I will not vacate my salvation. I will not quit on you. I will not turn to the devil or turn to sin or turn to man. She says, so so if you look upon the affliction of thine handmaid, if, and if you remember me, if you cause your, your countenance to turn toward me and remember me, because I have times I wonder, do you remember where you left me last? Remember I told you when the Lord looked for me, he only want me to be where he left me last. Now, this is my walk. I don't know about your walk. But he once told me, when I look for you, I only want you to be where I left you last. So don't go back and don't go before me. Be where I left you last. So I always say, you know where to find me. I'm where you left me last. Whether that's where I want to be or not, you know, it's but it's where you left me last. Whether that's in a in on a mountain or in a valley, laughing or crying, wherever you left me last, that's where you can find me. Because I don't know what to do without you, so I'm just gonna stay where you left me last, as you instructed me, and go through my season. And the Bible says, she said, if you remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then will I give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. You say, what is she saying? She's saying, I vow a vow today. If you give me a son, I he'll be, he'll have a Nazarite co covenant that he'll be a, have a I make a Nazarite vow, and not for they make all kinds of Nazarite vows. There's some for thirty days, and some for forty five days, and some for fifty days. She said, I make a vow for life. If you just give them to me. 
The minute you give them to me, she said, then I'll give them right back to you. You just loaning them to me. I, lo I give them right back. She prayed in that in that holy place. She cried in that holy place without opening her mouth. In so much that Eli looked at her, and, and remember, Eli had uh, sons that was bringing women around, and they were getting drunk, and the sons were stealing money, and women was coming around, and he, they was having sex with the women, and you know. So Eli looked up, and and because he's the gatekeeper, and he looked up and thought that this woman drunk. This is not how women, this is not how, how you act in prayer. So yeah, he wanted to know why would you come here drunk? Why are you here drunk this morning? Your mouth moving, but you ain't saying nothing. You you know why are you here drunk? How long are you gonna keep doing this? Showing up to prayer drunk? He said, dangerous things when the seers can't see or when the seers are judging things based on their own experiences. She had to look at the seer, at the priest and say, no, no, I, I'm not drunk. I'm just sorrowful in my spirit and crying out to the Lord. When I was at the University of Chicago Hospital and I was in the chapel praying with bitterness of soul and praying out of myself. And, and I wasn't, you know, you, you had to be real quiet in, in the chapel at the University of Chicago Hospital. And I was just on my knees praying and a touch came on my, on my right shoulder. And I looked up and a beautiful Caucasian woman was standing there and she said, brother, Oh, you look like you're in so much pain. Please, can I pray for you? And I said to her, oh, no, sister, no, that's okay. I'm just crying out before the Lord. That's where I am. I'm just crying out before. She said, oh, okay, I'm sorry. You just look like you're in so much pain. But I know if she's still living, if she's still living, I know she understand more now than she did when she touched my shoulder. Because once you have some, some seasons that take you out of yourself, you understand more. And she thought, this is not how you come to the chapel. This is not how you kneel before the Lord. You should be lifted and you should be praising God and you should be happy. That wasn't my season. Hannah said, this is not my season. It's my season to be, to be, to be bitter in my soul and sorrowful in my spirit. She said, so don't think of me as a daughter of the devil. Don't think of me as a daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken here too. Then the man of God. That's who he is. He said, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him this day. Now, I don't know why her other prayers. I don't know why when Elkanah touched and agreed. I don't know why when she kneeled by herself uh, over and over and over. I don't know why. And it produced the results she wanted. But this day, with bitterness of soul at wit's end, for they have no temptation taking you before we pray, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. This crying, weeping, pitiful woman, stronger than she know. And the stronger you are, the more you go through. It 
A lesser woman, a weaker woman wouldn't have lasted this long. So she's stronger than she know. So she took more than she knew she could take. Because they have no temptation taking you, come upon you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with the temptation right in your face, make a way to escape that you may bear it or be able to bear it. If you don't make a way to escape, you can't bear it. And this day, this moment, this time, she one step from not being able to bear it. But he's an on-time God. That's who he is. And this day, as she cry out to the Lord one step from losing it, and touch and agree with the anointing, with the one anointed to, 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 to touch and agree and to speak a word into her life. I was trying to help a, help a young lady who came to me for help and her family wondered and asked me, why do she need your help? We all saved. We're all in church. Why do she need your help? Why can't we help her? I said, I don't know why you can't help her, but I said, but don't you understand? You all don't have my anointing. I said, I don't know why you all can't help her, but I'm going to tell you this. I hope you can see and understand her daddy and you all don't have this anointing. This is what I'm anointed to do. This is why she's here for help. So all that came before me, I don't know what you all were doing. But now she's here because this is what I do. This is what I'm anointed to do. And when a man of God spoke and said, go in peace, it's done. And the Bible said, as that baby went her way, as the woman of God went her way, and verse 18 said, she went her way, did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. I got a word from the Lord. I don't need to see it come to pass. All I needed was a word from the Lord. I don't need to see it. All I needed was a word from the Lord. And now I know everything going to be all right. I just needed a word from the Lord. I just needed someone anointed on assignment for my life to touch and agree with me. And now I know it's going to be all right. She said, nah, and, now I, and, and now everything is fine. I don't have to wait till the battle over. I can shout now. And the Bible said the next time Elkanah knew his wife was being intimate with his wife, she conceived and had a son and called him Samuel, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. Samuel means God has heard. I asked of the Lord and he heard me. And God has heard. And then in 1 Samuel 2, 1, and Hannah prayed again. Remember the last time Hannah prayed, it was with bitterness of soul. The last time Hannah prayed, she cried sore. The last time Hannah prayed, the man thought she was drunk. But Hannah is a real woman of God, and she don't make a vow in a prison cell and forget it. She don't make a vow in a hospital and forget it. She don't make a vow in the basement and forget it. And Hannah prayed. It said, my heart rejoiced up in the Lord. My horn is exalted, which means my strength is back. My mouth is enlarged, which means now I can boast over my enemies. On the account, I rejoice in my salvation. I delight in your deliverance. There is none holy. Who is this talking? That frail, pitiful, bitter woman who couldn't have a baby? What's, this all was in her? She squares her shoulders up and says, there is none holy, not one as the Lord. For there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock. 
Rock means strength and rock means stability. There is no rock like our God. And my horn is exalted. Take no more exceedingly. She said, don't come to me with all that proud talking. Come to me with all that arrogancy. Don't come to me with all of that grander mentality. Don't come to me like you think you have something. Don't come to me like you think you have enough to be proud over. She said, don't even let that foolishness be in your mouth. She said, for the Lord is the God of knowledge, not you. And by him, Actions are weighed, which means he, he weigh your deeds like putting you on a scale. He said, she says, by him, actions are weighed. He weighed my tears. He weighed my anguish. He weighed my bitterness. He put it on a scale, but he weighed my prayer. He weighed my devotion. He weighed my tears to him. He weighed me every day coming back. She says, and by him, actions are weighed. The bowls of the mighty men are, are broken and they are stumbled and girded up with strength. She said, they were they that were full have hired themselves for bread and they that were hungry cease so that the barren now have seven sons and the woman who has many is somewhere wasting away. She said, the Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord make it poor and the Lord make it rich. He bring lower, he can humble you, or he lift it up and he can exalt you. He raises up the poor out of the dust and he can lift up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them an inheritance to the throne of grace or to the throne of glory or to the throne of honor for the pillars, which means the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. And, the, and he have set the world upon them. She said, it's the Lord. He will keep his, the feet of his saints. The Lord. She said, and the Lord, when he will make the wicked to be silent. The Lord, for by strength, or by man's strength, he can't prevail. You can't make this by your own strength, says the woman of God. She said, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces, and out of the heavens shall be thunder upon them. And the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto kings and exalt the horn of the anointed, which means make the anointed strong. The Lord will do it. Oh, this fragile, frail woman can pray. I didn't know all that was in you, Hannah. She said, it's the Lord. She said, it's the Lord. He the one who knows. He the one who have knowledge of what's going on. He knew how what, what I was as a, as a child. He knew what I was as a teenager. He knew what I was when I was happy. He knew what, who I was when I was bitter. And he knew who, that he was going to bring me out because he knew who I am. And the Bible ends, and that verse, at verse 11 ends with the, and the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. And he did it all of his life. Because the Lord, because it's the Lord. I love this. Because it's the Lord. Because it's the Lord. Because it's the Lord. Don't come to me boasting about how deep you are. Don't come to me boasting about how, how, how much you know. Don't come to me boasting about your job and your money. I've had trials and Don't come to me boasting about me, how much good is going on in your life. She's the only the Lord knows what's coming next. Living here below. Only the Lord. Only the Lord. Come on, lift those hands before the Lord. It's the Lord. trials and tribulations, unexpected situations, the Lord see you, living here below, the Lord see me, I've had friends to turn their backs on me, and leave me standing in the cold, the Lord know what I'm waiting on, he know what you're waiting on, I've been hurt in the church as I attempt to do God's work. 
by people who call themselves saints. Come on, lift your hands before the Lord. Many times I felt like giving up, <laughs> but the Spirit said, Daddy, you came. You know the Lord, He puts you through a lot of things you can't understand. You're stronger than you know. And for everything, He allows more than you there's know. a reason. That's why you're going through. So in my life, that's why you gotta wait. The devil gets no glory everywhere I go. How God has a way of turning things around. Yeah. He made it for my good. You want people who help you to, to know God. the way. Everybody counts you. Stop letting everybody talk to you. And you he stop talking to everybody. Me out without a doubt. I knew that he would. Share your business with people who can't help you. Now I know no defeat. I'm strong when I'm weak. God gave me a song. Tears in my I'm here, Lord. Have worked out for my I'm right good. where you left me last. This is where I am. You know what? I passed the test of time. And like a tree by the water, I stood. Because through it all, God gets the glory. Everywhere. Just for me. The devil made it for me. But I'm so glad God made it for my good. He made it for my good. Oh, he made it for my good. He didn't want it that and way. And the people are judged. Oh, no, 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 God made it for my good. But he said, but the Lord said no. God, he made it for my good. Yes, he made it for my good. I know no defeat. I'm strong when I'm weak. Oh, he made it. Yes, he did. He made it. Yes, he did. He made it. Yes, he did. God made it. Yes, he did. He made it for my good. Yes, he made it for my good. The devil made it for bad.
We have several prayer requests. I have the prayer request that I received from Minister Alfonso. I have prayer requests that we also have sent in. I'm sure Mother Farley has prayer requests. You go before unknown that you've even gone to win my world. They're hurting people. You come back with the head. They're hurting couples. My enemy. They're confused you come youth. Back and you call it my victory. Oh, oh. But the question is how 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 much do you want it? How bad do you want it? Before I know Do you want it so bad that, you've even gone that God will hear your voice every day? Do you want it so bad your love becomes my that it, it'll make you even more dependent on the Lord? Do you want it so bad? It leads me from the dry wilderness and all I do is pray. And all I did was worship. And all I did was worship. And all I did, I just, sometimes it's, it's nothing else to do. All I did was bow down. All I did was stay still. All I did was stay still. Come on, lift those hands before the Lord. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you lift your hands, you're lifting up every prayer request. You're lifting up your knees before the Lord. Lift those hands and let your knee be in your hands. Let your knee be in your hands. The songwriter says, you know before I do. So lift those hands before the Lord. before I do. My heart and as you see these hands lifted up, my team, find your truth. as you see these hands Mercy lifted up before you, the shade of living in. And you Hannah said, you know, hope again. that you know, and I did work that, that you know. It's no need for us to boast, my king, because we have nothing to boast about. Yet you know. So you know the things we talk about and the things we don't. You know the long days and the short ones. You know. And hallelujah, king. And you have saved me. This so way much I, better this the way, way I would have done it would have messed my life up. Would have made me walk away from everything. But this is better so your way. So hallelujah. The things I was thinking, the way I was thinking, that, that wasn't the right way. Introduced to me, and that was the right way. So it's so much better this way, King. So Thank you for the designing ear to know that that was not you. Thank you for the designing ear. To know that that was not your voice and that that was not your plan for my life. Come on, you lost ones. Come on, you all who got lost. I I lost me, you, you know, know where, where, I left where I left me. So come on. You reintroduced me to your love. You picked up all. Pieces, put me back 
see the salvation of the Lord, for thou knowest God. In the name of Jesus you Christ, are not flesh and bone. we celebrate you, my King. You are not weak or slow. We love you. We love you. You're everything brave and bold, and you're fighting for the Bible for said before Hannah prayers were answered, that she went and ate, you are not and that she was no more saved. It's not angry and closed. And even if so lift up thy countenance now. Know, for God knows. For us. And be it unto you, you even what you have left. When it comes to your children, you fiercely defend us. Do we so stand and go?
my King and my Savior, we touch and agree with the word. We touch and agree with your will. We touch and agree with your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. For we know you are a very present help in the time of trouble. I need the kind of love that outlasts the night. And we receive. I need the kind of love that is willing to fight. Everything you have for us. When the going gets tough and my and we trust you. Enough, I see you showing up like never for God, before. you know. And only you know. We touch and agree with the will of God concerning prayers ask and prayers not ask. We touch and agree with the will of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I touch and agree with that mother who prayed for her daughter. I touch and agree for that dad who prayed for his sons and daughters. I touch and agree with that man praying for his co-worker and his neighbor. I touch and agree with that man who's going for his driver's license. I touch and agree in the name of Jesus Christ for that man who's praying for his brother and his and for his sister-in-law. I touch and agree in the name of Jesus Christ. For every prayer request that has been made, I touch and agree for the will of God concerning it. I touch and agree with your daughters. I touch and agree with every prayer request that has come to Miss Farley's ears. I touch and agree with the will of God concerning every prayer request that has been sent in. I touch and agree with the will of God. And oh, King, with the mindset that you would never stop fighting for us, I touch and agree with your will that if anyone has asked anything that's not your will, that it fall to the ground and not germinate and not bring forth fruit but die. But I touch and agree with your will that it fall to the ground and bring forth much fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. I touch and agree with your will. I touch and when agree with your will. Closer, with your will. It's winning me over. And your heart keeps pulling me closer. Pulling us so close. You will never stop. I touch and agree me, with the singles. Fighting for me. I touch and agree with your will. I touch and agree with the youth. I touch and agree with your will. I touch and agree with the seniors. I touch and agree with your will. I touch and agree with the marriages. I touch and agree with your will. Every word is a promise you keep. Cause you love me like nobody. You stand up for me in the darkness. I touch and agree with your will. You're by my side. You will never stop. I touch and agree with your will. You will never stop fighting for me. I touch and agree with your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you, saints. I miss you. Thank you for every birthday card and all the, all the encouraging words. Thank you for the, the, the gifts, the, the cookies and the, the chocolate. You know, I just want to say I thank you. I appreciate you and love you. Miss you very much. Thank God for you. Need the kind of love that Be encouraged in the Lord. To fight. In Jesus' name. When the going gets tough, in and Jesus' my name. Not enough, I see you showing up like never in Jesus before. name. This battle for my heart, you took on from in the Jesus start. name. You are the peace. Now come on, wrap those arms around walk. someone near you. If you can't find someone, if you say I'm by myself, then wrap those arms around yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
find someone and wrap those arms, touch someone or, and be touched in the name of Jesus Christ. If no one is with you, then wrap your arms around yourself and let the Lord embody you. Come on, we should all be touched. We should all be touched. Grab your son, grab your daughter. Grab your goddaughter, grab your godson. Grab your grandchildren. Let them feel the love of Jesus pouring out of your pores, oozing out of your spirit. He's a rock of all Kiss their, kiss their forehead and their cheeks. Kiss He'll their hands and their arms. Leave you alone. Tell them you love them. I can call on Tell them I'm still here for you. Early in the morning. And I'll be here tonight and I'll be here tomorrow. And I'll be here the He's day after that late. and I'll be here. He's always on time. Let the love of God flow through your house. Just Let it flow through your house. Let it flow through your house. If you have something with God, don't keep him to yourself. Share him with me. Let it flow through your house. He's a breeze. Then we thank you, Lord. Then we thank you, King. He's a shelter in the time of a storm. Then we are dismissed. Thank God for Jesus. He's a rock. Thank God for Jesus. Of all ages. He'll never ever. Thank God for Jesus. Leave you alone. Thank God for Jesus. I can call. You know the Lord is never late. He's always on time. He is so even as you I'm are so glad he stepped right in. Thank you, Jesus. Just when I need him more. Don't just go, go in peace. Spirit. 